So welcome to module two, video two, and this one is titled Creating Your Customer Avatar. So today we're gonna determine who our ideal customer is, and here's why this is so important. Marketing and selling online is all about efficiency. It's a massive world out there, and if you spend your advertising budget trying to sell your product to everyone, you're going to go broke. Success in online marketing is all about precision, and in order to be precise with our marketing efforts, we need to know three things. First, exactly who is going to buy our product. Second, why are they really buying it? And third, where do we find these people? So the people that we discover by asking ourselves these three questions become our ideal customer avatar. And what is an avatar, by the way? Well, it's defined as an icon or figure representing a particular person or group of people. So in order to write an effective sales presentation, we need to know who our customers are on an extremely intimate level. We need to know their biggest problems, fears, insecurities, passions, and desires because we must appeal to those in our sales message in order to create the desire to buy our solution. So what I wanna do with you today is walk you through this process in a personal real world exercise that I'm in the middle of conducting right now for my new company in the hydroponic space. So this isn't just an example for the sake of giving you an example. This is what I'm actually working on right now for my next business. And you're getting a little sneak peek into that at this very moment. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with what I've been working on for the past two years, here's a quick summary. And for those of you who are, I've got a pretty cool sneak peek at the original concept art uh, when I first started this project almost three years ago. So basically... I am building a product that will allow you to grow around three to $4,000 worth of organic food in your home each year for around three to 400 bucks a year. So it's easy to use, it's completely automated, it has a Wi-Fi antenna and a mobile app, and it's designed to work indoors year round. It removes the need for pesticides by 100% and it reduces water consumption over traditional agriculture and farming by over 90%. So it is very good for the environment along with your body. Now, the price point's probably going to be between $2,000 and $3,000 per unit. And so here is uh, a picture of the very first concept art that I had created a few years ago to give people an idea of what I had in mind. And as I started to tell people about this project and talk to them about it, advisors, mentors, uh, vendors, design companies, things like that, I needed a visual representation of just what the hell I'm talking about. And so uh, this is what we had built up. And again, this is not the real system. The real one is not going to look like this. It'll be around the same size, uh, but there's not going to have glass or anything like that. And uh, it's going to look quite different. But from a conceptual standpoint, eh, it's about 70 to 80% there. Now, in order to sell these things successfully, I need to start by creating my ideal customer avatar. Now, as you can imagine, this is a brand new industry for me. It's a brand new niche. It's a brand new group of people. You know, when it comes to entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, the online marketing crowd, well, I know this group of people intimately. It's all I've focused on for the last 10 to 15 years. I don't really need to do any market research. I know what people's problems, fears, and challenges are. But for this product, well, it's a whole new ballgame, and I've got to start from scratch just like you. So let's start with question number one and start to build out my avatar. So exactly who is going to be buying this thing? Well, first, let's get clear about what we're actually selling. Yes, we have a high-tech system for growing herbs and vegetables indoors automatically and at a lower price than the grocery store. That's what it is. That's what it does. But that's not what people are buying. They're buying the benefit that it provides. So why do people want to buy or grow healthy organic herbs and vegetables? Why do they want to eat these things? It's because they want better health. So you're not buying this system because you want a hydroponic system. You're buying it because you want to eat chemical-free greens that will give you more health and a longer life. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what I like to call an audience pyramid. So an audience pyramid is simply a way of organizing potential audiences from the largest and most broad, down here at the bottom, to the smallest and most specific. So as we go up each level in the pyramid, we get closer and closer to our hottest customer possible, which is the group that will end up right here at the very top. So let's map out who is in our target audience for my hydroponic system. Well, at the base of the pyramid, which is the most broad group of people possible, 
it would be people who eat vegetables, which is basically everybody on the planet. So that's clearly too broad and too general. So we need to go up a level. The next group would be people who think about eating healthier or going to the gym. <laughs> These are people who talk the talk, but when it comes to taking action and opening their wallet, they just never actually make it there. A better fit for us would be people who are actively spending money on health and fitness. So these are people who are aware of what they eat and their general state of fitness and health. They make conscious decisions around the foods they eat. They have a gym membership, they go to yoga classes, and they have the occasional green smoothie. So this is a huge delineation point in our pyramid because we've gone from an audience who is aware of health and fitness but doesn't take action to one who now spends real money on health-related products and services. So above this group, we have people who shop for organic produce at the store. This is anyone who shops at Whole Foods or who's willing to pay extra for pesticide-free organic food. All right, so who should be above them? Well, I think it's people who actually grow their own organic food in a garden or who shop at farmer's markets. These are people who not only buy organic produce, but they are willing to dedicate time and effort to acquiring it. And then that brings us to the very top of our pyramid, which is the most specific and targeted audience that we can possibly market to, and that is people who have already purchased a competing home grow product. These are people who have already purchased some kind of hydroponic system. So this brings me to a lesson or a little pearl of wisdom that is really, really, really important and that I really changed my life many, many years ago. So the biggest mistake that I see new entrepreneurs make is that they project their feelings onto everybody around them. So here's what I mean by that. And I was totally guilty of doing this years ago, by the way, when I was just getting started in the networking industry. So let's say that you have a product or a business opportunity and that you're incredibly excited about it. You've done your homework, you've used the product, and you're convinced that it is the greatest thing since sliced bread. You're thinking to yourself that, man, this is the greatest thing ever, this is going to change the world, and that it's going to make you rich, you know, ideally in the process. After all, how could somebody not want to use and buy this product? So what do you do? You start telling everyone you know about the product, expecting them to see the same things that you see, to feel the same way about it that you feel. And you expect them to start buying it by the truckload. And yet, at the end of the day, you've come to realize that 9 out of 10 people that you talk to have no interest in it whatsoever. And you're confused. You don't really understand why. You know, personally, I didn't get it. How could people pass on something so amazing? And what really gets you in trouble is when you project this attitude out onto the market in the form of paid advertising. And you start to actually spend and invest money on marketing and advertising, putting it out there in the world. This is how you go broke. Here's the lesson that you need to learn, and this was the epiphany that I had years ago. If you sell vitamins, don't try to market your vitamins to people who you think need them. Market to people who already buy them. If you sell a business opportunity, don't market to opportunity seekers. Market to people who already buy business opportunities. Market to people who've already purchased a franchise or started a business or done something like that that has required them to invest time, money, and effort. The distinction is small, but it's critical. One group says they want to buy a business opportunity while the other has already pulled out their wallet and done so. So, you know, if you sell organic produce, you want to market to people who already buy organic produce and offer them a better solution with different features. So out of our pyramid here, who is our ideal target audience? Who should I create my avatar around? Well, the easiest group would be at the top here uh, of people who already own a competing product, but that's a really small number of people. The sales would be easy, but our market is going to be small. So here's how I think about it. Simply put, you want to target the largest group of people there is who currently spend money on a similar product or the benefit those products provide. So for my hydro system, my sales presentation is going to be directed towards people who actively spend money on products that will improve their health and fitness. This is where our sales conversation is going to start, and then we're going to swallow up the rest of the pyramid in our presentation by addressing these audience's specific concerns. So the conversation starts and opens at this level with maybe an intro that goes something along the lines of, is health and fitness a big priority in your life? You know, do you eat healthy foods? Do you have a gym membership? Well, here's something that you'll absolutely want to hear about, right? So it opens up the conversation at this level. 
And then our, as our conversation continues and we start to talk about the system and the features and the benefits and what it does, it's automatically going to address all of the hot buttons of these groups as well. So let's look at another quick example for the seven-figure sales presentations training course, this product. So for that, my pyramid looks like this. At the bottom, we're going to start with people in sales who work for a business. The next group, people who want to start a business. The next group, people who have a business currently. And above them, people who have a business that they want to grow. Now, it's an important distinction to make. A lot of people have businesses out there that they're satisfied with. They don't really want to grow them. It might be a convenience store, might be a laundromat, might be a restaurant. Might be a clothing alterations business. Who knows? But to be a prospect for this product, you have to at least have the desire to grow your business and sell more product and service. And finally, at the very top of our product are people who have already purchased training products before. These are individuals who have the desire to grow their business and they're willing to invest the time, money, and effort into acquiring new skills and learning new techniques that will allow them to do that. So who's in my target audience for this product? Well, it's a really interesting question, and we have to be careful about this. These three groups of people right here, these top three levels, have invested money into their businesses. So they're definitely in our target audience. People who have a business had to put up time, money, and effort in order to start that business. Obviously, these individuals above this are going to be even better fits for this product. But what about people who want to start a business? You know, there was some point in my career when I didn't have a business, but I wanted to start one. I had the desire. And so for my products in this industry, when it comes to entrepreneurship, starting a business, growing a business, whatever it may be, I typically start the conversation with a line that goes something like this. Are you an entrepreneur who currently owns a business or are you looking to start one? That's going to allow me to expand my potential audience to the biggest pool possible. And if I can get this group engaged into my message and bring them on to one of my webinars, then I know I've got a really good chance of turning them into a customer. And this group of people right here is probably, you know, the same size as all three of these groups combined. So it's a really large group of folks. All right. So at this point, we've answered question number one, which is who's buying our product or service? And our broadest answer was people who actively spend money on products that will improve their health and fitness and everyone in the categories above that. We've also answered question number two. Why are they buying our product or service? And the answer is that they're buying our product because they want to improve their health and live a longer, more productive life by eating clean food that's good for them. And that brings us to question number three, which is where can we find these people? So where can I find people who actively spend money on their health and fitness, who buy organic produce, who have gardens, or who already own a competing hydroponic food system? Well, let's list out some of the potential niches. Here we go. Hydroponic garden owners, gardening enthusiasts, farmer's market customers, whole foods customers, high performance entrepreneurs. This is kind of like the biohacking Dave Asprey, Tim Ferriss crowd, uh, preppers, cooks and chefs, CrossFit, athletes, juicers, chiropractors, nutritionists, doctors, vegans, supplement customers, naturopaths, dentists, and interestingly enough, I even have Tesla and Prius owners. That seems kind of weird. Why would I include the buyers of a particular set of cars? Well, individuals who buy those two categories of cars, specifically Teslas, are into new cutting-edge technologies, and they clearly have a lot of disposable income. They're also environmentally conscious. They like to buy products that help save the environment. And the, Prius, uh, and the Prius owners will clearly fall into that category as well. So when we start to advertise uh, this hydro system you know, during the launch, I'm absolutely going to target owners of those two sets of cars. And as we start to think about other niches that we can target when it comes to marketing for this product, uh, I'm sure we're going to come, come across other ideas. You know, right off the top of my head, people who have purchased and installed solar panels on their homes. Again, they're willing to spend money to be more environmentally conscious. So as a whole, all of these different groups of people are really united by one or two things. They all have a general interest in their health and fitness, uh, or they're all conscious about the environment and they're all willing to spend money on those things. So once we've identified these niches, we wanna dive into the media channels they consume 
and the conversations that are taking place there. So who are the personalities that these individuals watch, follow, and read? What are the blogs and articles that they read about? What are the videos that they watch? You've got magazines, gosh, like Men's or Women's Health, Health and Fitness. You've got influencers and personalities like The Food Babe, Dr. Mercola, Tim Ferriss, Oprah, uh, Mike Adams and Natural News, etc., etc., etc. So you want to subscribe to these media channels, subscribe to these influencers. You want to buy their books, buy the magazines, and especially, and especially buy the competing products. So when I started designing the Hydro System, I bought and used all of the existing systems out there. I joined the forums for those products. I watched all of the video reviews on YouTube for them. And I started talking to existing customers. So why do I want to do that? And why do you want to do the same thing? Because you need to understand what's going on in their heads and in their hearts. You need to know what makes them happy, sad, mad, glad, afraid, frustrated, angry, excited, and greedy. You need to know the faults and shortcomings of the competing products and why people buy one brand over another. And once you really have your finger on the pulse of this market, you need to take the most important step of all. So this was a priceless copywriting gem from one of my mentors. And that is you need to sit down and you need to write a diary entry from the point of view of your ideal customer. Essentially, this is a dear diary entry for their day from when they woke up to what they ate for breakfast to how they generally felt in the morning, uh, where they eat for lunch, where they buy their groceries and work out, how do they feel at the checkout counter at the store when it's time to pay, what do they do in the evenings, what do they read online, what magazines, what kind of car do they drive, what do they talk to their friends about, and what are their fears and frustrations, what are they insecure about, what are they scared of, what do they wish to change in their life, do they own a competitor's product, how is the experience when they use it? Have they thought about buying one if they don't own one already? And if they didn't purchase, well, why not? What objections held them back? So you want to write it like a diary entry from their perspective. It's essentially a day in the life of John Doe or Susie Q. And once you have your diary entry complete, it's time to write the letter to your sales presentation. And simply put, you're going to write it as if you're writing a letter to Susie or to John you're going to know what she's reading about, thinking about, and what excites and frustrates her, and what makes her insecure and confident, and everything in between. It will allow you to put yourself in your prospect's shoes, which is exactly what you must be able to do in order to create an effective sales presentation. So here's what you need to do next. First and foremost, you need to create your own audience pyramid. Once you've done that, I want you to answer our three questions. Exactly who is going to buy my product? So these are the people who ideally already spend money on, again, whatever category that you're in. Two, why are they buying our product? And this is the ultimate benefit that they want to get by purchasing your product. This is an internal emotional reason that is not about the external features of your product or service. And third, where do you find them? So this is the list of different people, products, niches, and media centers where your target audience hangs out. Now, the goal of all of this is to allow you to create an avatar of your ideal customer. It's to put yourself in your prospect's shoes so that you can truly experience their pains, frustrations, fears, and desires, which is exactly what you need to know in order to create an effective sales presentation. And we are about to start that process and dive into the meat of our 12-part equation next up in Module 3.